Hello, everybody. This is Jeff at Divine Cosmos, and this is a reading of my article entitled Nothing to Fear, but Fear Itself, Shifting from Fear to Love. Fear is running rampant on our world, and it is blinding many to the inner guiding voice of their soul, and it is keeping us from creating the better world that we all know can exist. We can all transcend our fears by embracing a few higher truths and increasing our awareness of a few important points. In this article, I'll review the state of fear that has us in its grip, and then I'll bring to your attention some important truths that, if embraced, can liberate us from its grip and catapult us towards a brighter future. A World of Fear our world is dominated by fear. Fear of terrorism, fear of getting old, fear of death, fear of cancer, fear of whatever. You name it. The mainstream media bombards us with bad news. Commercial interests play on our many insecurities and fears to sell product. Our fears are reflected in the wars that we wage. The war on terror, the war on drugs the war on, you name it. Our fears are reflected in the themes and archetypes in our fiction. Zombie apocalypse, alien invasion, end of the world, good versus evil, etc. Our fears are reflected subtly and not so subtly in all aspects of our lives and the world that we create. On a personal level, many of us allow the painful or challenging experiences of our past to dominate our thinking and responses in the present. We live in fear of re-experiencing past traumas and become guarded, defensive, and reactive rather than staying open and present. Perhaps our deepest fears are of not having enough or not being enough, of not being able to provide physically for ourselves and not being good enough, worthy enough, or deserving enough. Fears that were born from the illusion of limitation that our reality encourages. We have become lost in this realm of separation and duality and have come to believe deeply in the idea of limitation and separation as absolutes of existence. We have lost touch with our higher self who knows no limitation and no separation from the one and the all. Blinded by fear. Fear isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fear is an aspect of the ego, and a certain amount of it is required to protect and safeguard us as physical beings. But fear has become exaggerated within us well beyond the instinct for protection, becoming a way of life, a constant experience, and an inner guiding voice. Fear was meant to encourage us to be conscious and aware to be observant of any dangers around us, and yet fear now encourages many to be unconscious and unaware of the inner guiding voice of their soul and their higher self, their divine presence. As Leo Tolstoy once said, let fear once get possession of the soul, and it does not readily yield its place to any other sentiment. Manipulated by fear. There are those in our world who are using fear as a tool to divide us, to disconnect us from our inner truth and divine presence, and to disempower us. These people have realized that fear is a powerful tool that they can use to control others, achieve their self-serving agendas, and give themselves a false sense of power and self-importance. While they can create circumstances and situations that are calculated to create fearful experiences in many, you can choose to be conscious and aware of your own emotions and reactions and not have fear activated within you. Fear disempowers. Fear is a powerful emotion that distracts us from focusing on what's important. It keeps us focusing on exactly what we don't want instead of focusing on what we do want. Our fears interfere with our ability to create the best possible outcomes for our lives and the world. 
Our fears keep us caged within a a limited set of possibilities. As we awaken to the truth of our higher self and the wider reality, we realize that our thoughts are creative and that what we focus on, we attract. The creative power of thought is largely determined by its duration, consistency, and emotive intensity. And fear is a very strong emotion. So letting it run amok in your head will make you a powerful manifester of what you don't want. This is why people who have mastered their minds never dwell on their fears. And this is why those that seek to empower themselves through controlling others always try to encourage our fears. Transcending our fears. A great shift in the consciousness of humanity is occurring, and many of us are beginning to transcend our fears, shifting from the fear-centric responses of the mind and the ego to the compassion-centric responses of the heart, shifting from fear and judgment to forgiveness and love. Yet many are still caught up in their personal dramas as well as the collective earthly drama, wars and terrorism everywhere, Famine and poverty, disasters of all kinds, there seems to be a lot to be worried about. As Marie Curie said, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. There is nothing to fear. As one awakens to the wider reality and their higher self, one becomes less and less attached to all the drama of the world. One begins to see it for what it is. A grand illusion, a game that we are intentionally playing. Fully embracing a few truths about the wider reality can give you a profoundly different perspective on life's difficulties and liberate you from the tyranny of your fears. Here are five things that should liberate you from your fears. Number one, the real you lives forever. Existence does not end when the body dies, because the real you is not your body. The real you is an eternal, non-physical being, your soul, which is a thread of universal consciousness, or source consciousness, or what some people might call God. The real you is connected to your physical body as a vehicle for physical experience. When your body dies, your consciousness continues Forever. Here is something that Eckhart Tolle said in his book, Stillness Speaks, that echoes this. In the last few moments before physical death, and as you die, you then experience yourself as consciousness, free of form. Suddenly there is no more fear, just peace, and knowing that all is well, and that death is only your physical form dissolving. Death is then recognized as ultimately illusory, as illusory as the form you had identified with as yourself. Number two, the real you has no physical needs. Your soul is a non-physical being, pure energy, pure awareness. It does not need food. It does not need shelter. It does not need a job or money. Its existence does not depend on any of these things. Number three, the real you cannot be harmed. You are a thread of universal consciousness, and consciousness cannot be harmed by anything. Your body can be harmed, but the consciousness that drives your body cannot be harmed. No matter what happens, the real you is completely unharmed. While every experience leaves an impression on your awareness and your soul, nothing can ever permanently harm your soul, your true non-physical beingness, your pure awareness. Number four, the real you is loved completely and unconditionally. Your soul exists in higher planes of existence that are filled with love and bliss. Love and support are given and received unconditionally in these realms of existence. The real you is loved 
always. Number five, the real you chose to incarnate in the earth game. Your soul chose to participate in the earth game and the school of life. You scripted your life and and its major themes. You knew it would be challenging, but you were excited to play because you knew that formative growth only comes from real challenges. You were not concerned with the apparent danger of some of the challenges because you understood that it's just a game and that the real you can never be harmed. Shifting from fear into love. Imagine if your response to everything in your reality and your world, whether it was a major disaster or a painful experience, was compassion for yourself and everyone involved. Imagine if every experience in your past, which has encouraged you to respond in fear, was altered and erased, instead replaced by a response of compassion. What would that be like? What perspective would you have about the world and would fear even exist or be acknowledged by you? With the history of compassionate responses, how would you react to or feel about areas of your current reality that are causing reactions of fear? With the history of compassionate responses, how would you react to or feel about areas of your current reality that are causing reactions of fear? Maybe current situations wouldn't even have been manifested by you. Remember that resistance, frustration, anxiety, stress, and concern are all aspects of fear. There are many horrific circumstances where it might seem appropriate to react with fear, anger, and indignation. But imagine how healing it would be to react with compassion instead. It would allow the love and the light of the divine source to flow through you. It would open you to divine guidance and intervention. Exercising compassion allows every situation to be illuminated with light, love, and peace for yourself and all of humanity. Imagine if every person chose to react with compassion. Fear would disappear and kindness would blossom in its place. From kindness, love is born. The unconditional love of the divine source that can be widely and freely shared because its supply is unlimited. When the love of the divine source is present, anything and everything is possible and able to manifest with ease and perfection. Shifting your reaction from fear to compassion simply requires you to realize and be observant of a few points. Number one, your fear is illusory. The lesser you, the you here on earth, your egoic self, may be allowing fear to dominate its thoughts and manifest them into your reality. But the truth is, is that your soul and higher self know no fear. When you fully embrace this truth, it becomes much easier to let go of your fears. By choosing to let go of any fears that arise in you, they can be released and erased. This can take some persistence because fears can be tenacious. But with constant focus on letting your fears go, you will begin to feel freedom birth within you. And as you taste this, it will become easier and easier to release your fears. Through the desire to transcend your fears, you are encouraging yourself to observe your fears free from judgment and attachment. Observing and being consciously aware of your fears is the most powerful tool to releasing the habit of fear because only through awareness is change possible. With detachment from fear, you will be able to think and sense with greater clarity and manifest with greater power. Number two, forgiveness. When you are aware that you have reacted and responded with fear, be forgiving to yourself. Know that fear is a conditioned habit. It will take time and dedication to shift this conditioning. With awareness, you can overcome your automatic fear reactions. Responding with forgiveness whenever you feel a fear reaction starting acts as an opening that allows you to express the higher energies, thought processes, and emotions of compassion. With forgiveness, you encourage your detachment from fear and consciously choose to manifest a loving reality for yourself no matter what occurs and what challenges you face. Practice forgiveness regularly 
and you will notice a beautiful habit of forgiveness forming. Number three, compassion. There are many circumstances occurring on our world right now that are causing terror, pain, and suffering for all those involved as well as those who are witnessing. Many of these situations are manifesting because of the strong egos and lack of compassion of the individuals involved and their inability to sense the love and guidance of their higher self, of their divine presence. This causes them to inflict pain upon others. When we view these horrific circumstances with a wider perspective, we recognize that these circumstances are acting as catalysts for positive shifts in many people. As pain and suffering are witnessed by those around the world, compassion is activated within many people. This activation of compassion opens the individual to the flow of healing energy from their soul and the universe, raising the energetic frequency of our world and all of humanity. This heightened energy is then triggering many more to awaken to the truth of the wider reality and their higher selves. The more you respond regularly to situations with forgiveness and compassion, the more you will deeply feel the peaceful energy that it produces within you and in others, and the more you'll want to share your compassion with yourself and others, birthing a beautiful new pattern within your thoughts, emotions, and the reality that you manifest. If you would like to help energize and manifest a world filled with compassion, please consider repeating the affirmation below regularly. With the support of Mother Earth and the Creator, I now emanate from my soul sacred waves of light, carrying compassion to empower the compassion of the Creator within every person upon the Earth. The Earth is a space of compassion and love eternally. This is our collective experience. Your heart is inviting you to be loving in every moment. It is through compassion and your conscious awareness of fear that you can encourage others to experience the profound love of the Creator and contribute to the manifestation of a new reality, a reality characterized by cooperation, harmony, peace, and prosperity for all. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this article, you might consider following my blog to get notified when I post new articles. Go to http colon slash slash divine dash cosmos dot net to follow the blog and to check out my other articles. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe because we have more content coming your way.